Hi guys, welcome to Vogue Rehab Bootcamp. I am Nick Thivet. All right, today's video is something that I think I should have probably done in the beginning, but it just didn't occur to me to make a video like this. But a lot of people don't understand whether or not they're entitled and people are still saying, they told me I'm not entitled. And I say, why? And they go, I don't know. So that, that tells me that people are going in there not knowing whether they're not, whether, not knowing whether they're entitled up front. You need to know up front before you go in. If you're not entitled, don't waste your time going. So you need to know if you're entitled. That way, if they say you're not, you can go, yes, I am. You know, if you, you know, in order to get a, a VA loan, you have to be a veteran and not have a dishonorable discharge. Okay. If you know you're a veteran and you know you didn't get a dishonorable discharge and you go to get a VA loan and they go, you can't have one, you wouldn't go, oh, okay, well, just give me a conventional loan. No. You would say, what do you mean I can't get one? I'm a veteran. I got an honorable discharge. Here's my DD-214. They would go, well, you can't have it. Well, I need to speak with someone else. Nobody, no vet would sit there and let them do that to them. But with Voc Rehab, you guys are letting them go. You don't, you're not entitled and you go, oh man, that sucks. And then you leave ticked off. So you need to understand how you're entitled. Okay. So this little logo I have here that I thought was brilliant that nobody really seems to get. Um, so it's obviously not that brilliant. Um, what it means is if you ETS, if, if you got your first service connected disability less than 12 years ago, then you need an employment handicap. If you got rated with your first service connected disability over 12 years ago, then you need a serious employment handicap in order to be found entitled. So the first step, what do I need? When did I ETS? Whether you ETS yesterday or 11, year, 11 years and 11 months and 29 days ago, you need an employment handicap. Okay. So at that point you go, okay, I need an employment handicap. I ETS two years ago. Now what? And the employment handicap has to encompass all three of these situations in order to be an employment handicap. So you've got to have um, a vocational impairment. And basically what that is, is I've got service connected disabilities that affect my ability to do my job or get a job. That's really what it is. Number two, um, the vocational impairments that you have contribute significantly to your ability to do your job. So you can't say I have tinnitus or, or say, you know, I have a wrist issue and my job is uh, something where you have to talk. I'm a DJ, but I have a wrist issue. That's not, your wrist is not affecting your ability to be a DJ, okay? Now, if you're a firefighter and you have a wrist issue, then, then your surface connected disability severely um, uh, impairs your ability to do your job. So you got to have those two things. Number three, the effects of that service connected disability and vocational impairment have not been overcome. Okay. That's the key. Most vets that go in there have a service connected disability. It does affect their ability to do their job significantly. The problem is they tell you you've overcome it. And if you look at video number 15, we go into great detail about how they try to trick you with that. Um, and the key that you have to understand is when you say, I've been in for less than, I, I've ETS less than 12 years ago, I've got a service connected disability, it seriously affects my ability to do my job, and I have not overcome that issue with education and training. They will say, yes, you have. You say, no, I haven't. But why haven't you? You have not because any individual who qualifies for a suitable job but does not obtain or keep that job for reasons beyond their control has not overcome their vocational impairment. So you have to know that whole little spiel I just gave you. So when they say you've overcome your vocational impairment with education and training because you have an associate's degree, you say the guidelines say I have not overcome my vocational impairment if I cannot find or keep work that is suitable. And they'll come back and say, how do we know you haven't been able to find work? That's when you present a job log and you say, I've been looking for suitable work that does not exacerbate my service connected disabilities for six months and I haven't gotten one job. That means you have not overcome it. So what you need to do in order to prove that is create a document that says, these are the 40, 20, 30 jobs that I applied for. Here's the title. Here's the company. I did it within the last six months. 
They don't need to know you did them all last week. Don't tell them you did them all last week. Just say in the last six months, you can say three months if you want, these are the 20, 30 jobs I applied for. If they try to come back and trick you and say, we need to call all those people to make sure you're applied, you, you let them know, you know, hey man, this is not 1950. I don't have their phone number. I didn't walk up and interview with the person. I sent it through Indeed.com or whatever website is, you know, the hotness. And if they try to say, I need proof that you didn't get a job offer, again, you say, hey man, this is not the 50s. When you don't get a job, the way you find out is they don't ever talk to you again. They don't send you a nice letter saying, thank you, veteran, for applying, but we're going to go with someone else. Here's the rejection letter. No, you don't have that. So don't let them suck you into all those games. The bottom line is IETS less than 12 years ago. Okay. I don't have a dishonorable discharge. I've got service-connected disabilities. They affect my ability to get a job. And I've applied for lots of jobs and didn't get them. Therefore, by definition, I am entitled. And you need to know that. Stop going in there, letting them crap on you and tell you it's raining, okay? You got to know you're entitled. And when they say you're not, you got to understand what they say and come back and, and combat it. Okay, guys, so that's Employment Handicap. Obviously, I've changed clothes. This is an updated video because I said something in there that has actually changed and I wanted to, to correct this. So serious employment handicap. If you received your first service-connected disability rating over 12 years ago, then you have to have a serious employment handicap in order to be found entitled. Now, here's where you find the criteria for a serious employment handicap. And again, I went over it in great detail in video number eight. But you don't have to have all nine of these in order to have a serious employment handicap. You can still have one, even if you don't meet all nine of these, because some people have extenuating circumstances. Like there's a lady right now who lost uh, uh, her apartment and she's homeless. So whether or not she had a serious employment handicap before, she now has one because that situation has put her into a different category. But if you do have all nine of the criteria, then you have a serious employment handicap regardless. So if you go in there and you already know you meet the nine criteria for having an SCH and they try to say you don't, no, you need to defend that to the death. But if you don't have all nine, you can still have a serious employment handicap. They can still say you do. And if they, if you don't meet the nine criteria and they say you don't have a serious employment handicap, what I would do is I would um, really argue the factors that are outside of the nine criteria, but are still a factor to your inability to obtain and maintain work. I hope that makes sense. So at that point, that's when it's up to the counselor to make a decision about whether or not you have an SCH. So that's where there's a little bit of ambiguity and they can make a determination. So hopefully they will. But if you have a situation that does not meet the nine criteria, but it's pretty strong, you know, like, I don't know, maybe you're morbidly obese. Maybe you weigh like 400 pounds. That's a factor. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the people discriminate against overweight people. So that's a factor. So you may not have a neuropsychological, but you may be morbidly obese or you may have missing fingers, you know, that, that causes challenges. So um, there are other variables and there is really no list. That's where there's ambiguity and they can make a determination in your favor, even if you don't have an SCH or they can say you do have an SCH because of this other variable. So if you don't meet all nine and you got your first disability rating over 12 years ago, apply anyway. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I think that tells you kind of EH versus SCH, what you need to know going in there. That way, if they try to say, no, you're not entitled, you know whether or not you're entitled going in. That's my goal for you guys, right? Thanks for watching. I'm Nick the Vet.